Good evening. I'm Dash, Rick Dash, and this is Rick Dash Presents, a musical entertainment program that features some of the finest musical talent in the D.C. metropolitan area. Tonight, I have a great group of musicians. They are the epitome of music. I had the opportunity to uh, play with these guys, and it was really, truly a great experience. And so, without further ado, I'm going to introduce to you Claw. Give me some distance. I'm a 
Welcome back to Rick Dash Presents. I'm here with some great, great musicians here. I had the opportunity to sit down and perform with them at the Fillmore. Spell F-I-L-L-M-O-R-E. <laughs> I can spell. I can spell. But now, nah, here's some of the guys and uh, of the band Claw. So I would like for you just to introduce yourselves. <clears throat> yes, hello. My name is D. Bell. <laughs> percussionist with Claw. Just hanging out with these guys, having a great time. I'm V. I play bass. <laughs> I'm the Hondo. I'm the other guy. <laughs> I'm Bam, the other other guy. <laughs> now you can see they're a bunch of crazy guys. They are being. Remember the night at the Fillmore uh, events? I remember it well, Rick. Uh, tell me a little bit about it, man. Um, it was it was just a great time, Rick. I mean, from the moment we got there and did our sound check, everything was wonderful. It was a great venue. Uh, you know, everyone showed up on time. We had a great crowd. And uh, it was just a great show. We had a, real, a lot of fun. Well, tell me your experience of the uh, Fillmore, man. It was great. It was great playing with a reggae band. I don't know if we even brought that up yet. <laughs> but um, <laughs> this is a great reggae band. I like the whole feel, you know. It's like, you know, that Roots thing. I think it's really good. We had a great time at the Fillmore. It was, uh, you know, it's one of those high points uh, in my musical, long musical career. But it was good. It was really good vibe with the guys. We had fun. Nothing like having a great stage, light, and sound system. Yes. We had really elevated our playing. <laughs> but it also elevated our stage presence. We really looked good out there and sounded good. But yeah, it was great. I had a great time. I love playing reggae. You know, the lots of room, you know, you don't, it's not like <laughs> they're playing like this, you know, <laughs> this dude behind me like, oh, hey, dude, you know, no, it, it was cool. I, I really dug it. I, uh, I, I had a good time in case you couldn't tell. Oh, yeah, I you wouldn't see that in the film. I, mean, I, I don't really like emote that much, so. You know, uh, hopefully you can tell yeah, you that. You can I hardly know. tell you emote. Yeah, you know, I, I know. Emote? <laughs> or gesticulate or, or anything like that. I just kind of, you know, Whoa. Whoa. stow it. So, man, what did you think of the... Uh, <laughs> still there, brother. <laughs> still there. So, man, what did you think of it? I, I'm not sure. Gesticulated. What was that? Gesticulated. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, it was a great experience. I think you guys mentioned about the sound and, and just being at the Fillmore itself. Uh, you know, the one in Silver Spring isn't so much the, the historic Fillmore that you hear about, but just to have that name associated and, and to play at a venue like that is is, is uh, definitely one of those things you check off on your bucket list. Right, so, and then just playing with you guys. I mean, it's a lot of fun and everybody's got big ears and listening to each other and uh, it comes out in the music. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, the experience of the film, what was something that just set it aside for you, you know what I mean? What really stood out? The sound. The sound? I could hear everything. Oh, it, was, it was awesome. It was really just being able, and, and the fact that the engineers, you know, you could really interact with them. Like, mm -hmm. they were, you were communicating with them. At least for, from my perspective, I thought it was really they were on their job. Yes, so sir. I really thought that was really, yeah. We had a really good sound system yeah. in that uh, particular. So, uh, starting with Mr. Bell, how long you been playing percussions, man? Uh, for at least um, ever. Um, I've been playing for a long time, and I'm only 19, so I've been playing at least, <laughs> I've been playing at least 21 years. He's 12. And um, <laughs> I've been playing, you know, I love, uh, <laughs> I love playing them, but you know, it all comes to what I really like about it, the band is that it's a reggae band and see the whole thing as far as being a percussionist, I really enjoy. I wanted the reason I even started playing set was because I wanted to play reggae, you know, and, and once I start playing reggae on the set and then I start playing, I could play, actually gave me a better feel for the blues, you know, and I, that's one thing I, I noticed that reggae is a real nice feel music, you know, mm -hmm. especially you take your time out, you get in that right state of mind, you put a lot of space in there. It's it's really it's a it's a nice nice experience. I think it sets you up for it. Set me up for like more feel and, and playing blues, and things like that, and just put, put in space. But so I'm just gonna I'm gonna emphasize it, it was great playing to Fillmore, but it was great playing to Fillmore playing reggae with you guys. No, fantastic. No, that's uh, that's where I'm at. So well, we're taking it around the park. So Vinny, how long you been playing? Man? Well, I uh, I got started late. I didn't start playing uh, bass until I went to college. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I got more into music than I was. I was really into sports before then. Mm -hmm. And at one point when I was in junior high, I took a drum class, mm -hmm. you know, where they set you up with one drum and they teach you ta ta, ti ti ta stuff. And uh, so I got like a little taste of um, music then and how it would feel. But I always loved music, even as a child. And I remember one of the first songs I really remember is uh, Bob Marley's I Shot the Sheriff. Mm -hmm. And I heard that I was Eric Clapton. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard the Bob Marley version, and uh, and that really, I mean, I just I taped it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I played it over and over and over again. It was just like the most awesome sounding thing because um, everything up to that point was kind of. Uh, you know, you, you listen to either rock or you listen to R and B, yeah. and then all of a sudden it's like, what's this? You know, and so uh, that kind of got me set up to play reggae mm -hmm. later on. Oh, fantastic, man. So Hondo, how long you been playing that magical guitar that you play? For <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been I've been playing for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and what inspired you to, to actually to pick the guitar? Wow. Well, I have a few family members that are very musical mm -hmm. like that kind of come out of a <laughs> <laughs> all right sit on my hands sit on my hands on here no, um on your like, hands not my I, I come from a very very musical family mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh i have cousins that sing that sing professionally mm -hmm. i have cousins that are like road managers things like that i have uh just i grew up in church i grew up at a queen's chapel Oh, okay. Went to the church in Beltsville. Okay. Got and you. so everybody from the time I was knee high. I'd like to see another clip of our performance at the Fillmore. Sure. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. The lead guitar, the guitar hero, Captain Hondo. All the percussion, the project, Captain Bardell. On keyboards, the big fellow, the Dash, and Captain Bardell.
precedent been set in my family or in my life where I've seen it, but then I just kind of, it was almost by accident in seventh grade, because uh, previously I was trying to do trombone and trumpet and all that stuff, and just, I was, I was the, I was the guy, like in the Christmas pageant and the, uh, um, the, the concerts where I pretend to play, like you're right, and I like be up there sitting like this and just going, same thing. you know, like just just kind of making motions like this. Mm -hmm. I was that guy, okay. and then in, uh, magically, and you're never out of key when you're doing that. Oh, never out of key because yeah. never blew a There key. is no key. <laughs> there is no key. Yeah. Um, so, so, been, so how long you been playing drums and, um, uh, you know, some of the influences in, in, in the drumming world. Oh, I wish I had, do. like, a good story where, like, you know, I was watching the Ramones on TV and that made me want to play drums, but there was a, a, I was 13 and there was a guy two blocks down to the south of us that started drum lessons, so I had to have drum lessons because he was doing it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. quit after two months and, uh, I don't know, years later, <laughs> here I am still playing. Thank so, you. interesting enough, I studied with a guy in Pittsburgh, uh, Eugene Babe Fabrizi. Mm-hmm. And Babe was a big band and orchestral drummer, so that when uh, bands would come into town, they'd bring like a lead trumpet and maybe a keyboard player, and they'd hire out the rest of the section. So you really had to know different musical styles, and you really had to know about your reading. And so I studied with him, and then I was fortunate enough to teach under him uh, for eight years up in Pittsburgh, and then moved down here. Fantastic, fantastic. Now I have a question for all of you, and uh, I've always asked this question with other musicians. Give me your definition of a musician. Wow. Uh, so that's interesting because a lot of people would say you have to be very proficient at your instrument. And, um, you know, there's some, some great music that's been made by people that weren't the most proficient. They, weren't, the, they couldn't play the scales the most. So it, it's somebody with big ears and has a lot of feeling and can get that emotion out of their instrument, whether it's their voice or a guitar or a trombone or whatever. Uh, and then can work that into environment with other individuals and make something better out of the whole, you know, out of the sum, out of the parts. Oh, fantastic. Hondo, your definition of a musician. Wow, okay. Uh, this could take hours. <laughs> uh, a musician, to me, is a person who can organize sounds in such a fashion as to be interpreted by other people mm -hmm. and, and the person who's creating the music. So it could be a person who's you know, scraping the side of a coffee pot or something like that, or anything that's organizing sound. Um, yeah, that, that, that's at the, I guess, basically at the ground state of what I think a musician is. Fantastic. And Vincent, what is your definition of Yeah, that? I'm going to go along with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's just, you know, someone, someone what is put, put sounds together. And like you said, it's like it doesn't even matter if it's a technically an instrument. Like mm -hmm. if you can beat on pots and make it sound good, mm -hmm. you're a musician. Fantastic, fan. And your definition? <laughs> what, what can I say? These guys, these guys covered all. No, actually, I totally agree with my. I do like. I like every every point that everyone's touched on. I like the communication thing. One thing I do like about about um, the music, especially if you're playing with a group, the whole communication thing. How collectively you have to be able you have to be able to go along. You know, to get along. I mean, to put out good sounds. At the same time, you have to produce good sounds. So yes, I'm. I concur with. All this is that I'm not gonna say I'm, I don't know how to take that. I'm not gonna say that saying, but but some of us folks know. Funky, funky. Yeah, who's generating that? Who's generating the heat? <laughs> Coming off a band. Reflection. <laughs> Right? I ain't talking. I ain't talking. I ain't reflecting nothing. It was like yeah. satellites that are like changing their path. Rotating around my head. Well, we got, we got a few. Like, you can just like pick any five out there. God damn, any five. Oh, yeah, there's five. a rock star out yeah. there. Yeah. 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 It's shooting. It's shooting. Yeah. It's shooting. Yeah. It's shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, cousin yeah. Eric. Hey, how you doing? I swear I've seen you before. Yeah. Ricky. Yeah. yeah. How you doing? Great How you doing? Great dash. How and you know, yeah, I know you better get the blue thing out of the way, man. Uh, right so earlier, I was, I was, uh, David wanted to take some photos, but she can't get back without it's a red thing. You got the time, you know? Huh? So anyway.
Tell presents <laughs> a soulful a Christmas. Slide, 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 slide on the set. Right on the set. And I'd like to thank you for coming out on Rick Dash presents. Tonight we had Claw, some great group of guys, Mr. D Bell, Mr. Oh. Vinny, the creator of Claw, Hondo, world's greatest guitar player, and Bam, 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 Bam. Greatest drummer in the world, too. So, once again, thank you for coming out and checking us out on Rick Dash Presents.